Financial Planner, Flow on YouTube. 사회주의 조국을 위하여 항상 준비하자! by his Secretary of State, UN Ambassador and National Security Advisor. President Trump is turning up the heat on North Korea for a third time this week. Late tonight, asked, is the U.S. going to war? I think you know the answer to that. He has disrespected our country greatly. He has said things that are horrific. And with me, he's not getting away with it. He got away with it for a long time between him and his family. He's not getting away with it. It's a whole new ball game. And he's not going to be saying those things, and he's certainly not going to be doing those things. Uh, I read about we're in Guam by August 15th. Let's see what he does with Guam. He does something in Guam. It will be an event the likes of which nobody's seen before, what will happen in North Korea. It's not a dare. It's a statement. It has nothing to do with dare. That's a statement. This is a crucial warning to the United States calling that fire and fury comment by President Trump a load of nonsense. They say that this has infuriated the army. They list the exact rockets that they plan to use to fire at Guam, David. And they say this, can, this, this plan will be complete by mid-August. The administration will have to decide whether some sort of preemptive strike or some other measure should be undertaken to stop Kim. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. He has been very threatening uh, beyond a normal statement. And as I said, they will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power, the likes of which this world has never seen before. President Obama said global warming is the biggest threat. I totally disagree. I say that it's a simple one. Nuclear is our greatest threat worldwide. Not even a question, not even a question. What to do if North Korea carries out its threat to lob four ballistic missiles in this direction? In the event of a missile attack, do not look at the flash or fireball. It can blind you. Take cover under a concrete structure or below ground. Lie flat on the ground and cover your head. It could take 30 seconds or more for the blast wave to hit. And if caught outside, shower with lots of soap and shampoo to help remove radioactive contamination. Washing hair and taping window sills and stuff like that, that's kind of new to us. This is a weapon that we don't want to mess around with. North Korea's military says its missiles would drop fear into the United States, splashing down in international waters 20 miles off Guam. Nobody ever wants to experience the devastation that's caused by nuclear weapons. For decades, the Soviet Union and the United States have built and tested hundreds of different nuclear weapons. With so many nuclear blasts documented with video evidence and after the US bombed Japan, seeing firsthand the devastation, the world clearly doesn't want to experience it ever again. Fortunately, we've avoided all-out nuclear war in the 21st century. However, 
today, the threat of nuclear war is still very real. Whether in the hands of a small country or a top nation state, nuclear war is something everybody should be prepared for. Much like planning the natural disaster, economic collapse and other so-called events, it's important to have a plan and supplies already in place. If you don't have a clue what supplies you should consider, I've put together the top 20 things you absolutely must have to survive a nuclear war and total economic collapse. If a nuclear attack does happen, it won't be safe to venture outside for food. You should stay sheltered for at least 48 hours, preferably longer. Having food and medical supplies on hand can put your mind at ease and allow you to focus on other aspects of the survival. 2. Fallout Chamber Bunker you would like to dig yourself a nice deep hole surrounded by solid thick concrete walls. The radiation from nuclear fallout can be extremely dangerous and can linger for several days after the initial blast. Radiation can even seep through the material, so that's why it's important to have a thick wall between the invisible radiation and your family. The thicker the wall, the better, because it loses its negative attributes when passing through things. If you don't have a nuclear shelter, this whole list may be irrelevant. That's what makes it the most important item to have among the list of top 20 items you absolutely must have to survive a nuclear war. 3. Heat Source You can only survive 3 hours in dangerous weather conditions. If you live in a colder location, you will want to have some sort of heat source within your shelter. This should already be packed in your kit. You do not want to gather sources of heat after a blast or during the fallout. 4. Electric Generator A good hand crank generator or a more advanced electric generator can be the difference between freezing to death in pitch black chaos and enjoying a nice, comforting cup of tea in your fallout shelter while you wait for the chaos outside to subside. While they can be a little bit expensive, an electric generator gives you endless option for heating, cooking, lighting and powering your subterranean fallout shelter. 5. Bedding Staying warm is important. Most likely the blast will knock out power and you will be without electricity. And most likely it will be cold for a while. You can buy and use bedding units for a camping kit or invest in a higher end bed set. But it is important you can bring it with you in case you need to evacuate after the initial blast and radiation has subsided. 6. Water Water is something first world-class citizens take for granted on a daily basis. Turn on the tap, buy a bottle of water or visit your local fast food chain and you can find water. The idea of not having water is simply an afterthought. The painful truth is that when a nuclear blast occurs, the first priority is to protect your water. Ideally, you want to have enough water stored in advance and it should be given top priority. Many emergency kits come complete with the capacity to store multiple gallons of water. A family of four should store a minimum of 12 gallons of water every single day. 7. Food Freeze-dried food, canned food and any non-perishable food is important. If you want, you can even add some nice plants and set up a hydroponic system for keeping fresh food in your bunker. Dry foods like cereals, beans, rice and flour are good to have as well. You'll also want to consider some ready-to-eat meals or military meals, RMEs. One RME a day can offer you enough calorie and nutrition to survive a nuclear blast while hanging out in your fallout shelter if required. Make Make sure you get hold of some of these flameless heaters for prepping your MREs. 8. Potassium Iodine 
to protect your thyroid from the harmful effects of radiation after a nuclear explosion and to reduce the risk of cancer, take potassium iodine tablets immediately after the blast. This should be a large part of your fallout shelter. Nuclear explosions can produce heavy amounts of radioactive iodine, but if iodine tablets are taken just before or just after the ingestion of radioactive fallout, KI or KI-03 pills will saturate your thyroid, reducing the possibility of radioactive iodine getting to your thyroid. These pills have a shelf life of around five years. So it's important, just like other rations, you need to resupply after a certain period of time. 9. Radiation Detector Before leaving outside of your shelter, you will want to make sure that the radiation levels are safe enough. Ideally, you want the radiation levels to be below 20 REM. For a more thorough explanation of these radiation levels, you can read Survivopedia's post. 10. Stock up on medical supplies. Having a few medical items available could be the difference between life and death if you're injured in the attack. You'll need a basic first aid kit. You can purchase these pre-packaged or make one yourself. You'll need sterile gauze or bandages, antibiotic ointment, latex gloves, scissors, tweezers, a thermometer and a blanket. A first aid instruction booklet. Purchase one from an organization like the Red Cross or assemble your own with materials you print off the internet. You should know how to bandage wounds, administer CPR, treat shock and treat burns. Prescription medications or supplies. If you take a specific medication every day, try to make sure you have a small emergency supply built up. 11. Stock up on vitamins. A lot of preppers do not think about this either, but it is very important. These days, it is becoming increasingly difficult to get adequate nutrition from the foods that we eat. That is why it is very important to have an adequate store of vitamins and other supplements. 12. Personal Hygiene Items While these may not be an absolute essential, the truth is that life will get very unpleasant very quickly without them. For example, what would you do without toilet paper? Just think about it. Imagine that you finished your last roll of toilet paper and now you can't get any more. What would you do? The truth is that soap, toothbrushes, toothpaste, shampoo, toilet paper and other hygiene products are things that we completely take for granted in society today. 13. Pocket Knife a good pocket knife can help in many ways. You never know when you will need to cut open some bags of food, open a can, build a gadget of some sort or even fight off potential enemies as a last resort. A good solid stainless steel pocket knife will be your best friend before, during and after a nuclear explosion. 14. Sandbags Why? Because you want to continue increasing the distance between you and the radiation. The thicker your barrier, the less radiation will harm you, as stated above. It will lose its negative attributes when passing through physical things. For every 3.6 inches of sand or dirt between the radiation and yourself, you will literally half your dose of exposure. This inevitably increases your chance of survival dramatically. 15. Get other miscellaneous items. Round out your emergency preparedness kit with the following. A flashlight and batteries dust masks, plastic sheets and duct tape, plastic ties and wet wipes for personal sanitation, a wrench and pliers to shut off utilities such as gas and water, 16. Radio A portable radio is indispensable. The most likely scenario is that you will be able to gain valuable access to alerts, warnings and government information so that you can be prepared and know what is happening outside. Of course, things will be chaotic and you may not trust everything that's on the radio, but note that a good AM and FM radio is better than no radio at all. Even better, invest in a CB radio so that you can reach local friends and residents near you to check on their status and get local reports. 17. A Good Rifle Guns. Like them or hate them, they are essential during times of crisis and war. When you don't know what could be happening outside, there's nothing like having a good rifle to protect your family from impending zombie attacks or the real enemy who dropped the bomb in the first place. 
Also, when the time is right and you have no other choice but to hunt for your own food, a rifle can help you kill the animal you need to feed your family or protect your food supply from any savages who want to steal and plunder your food and resources for their own survival. 18. Assess your risk and consider evacuation if a nuclear exchange is looking prominent. If evacuation is not an option, then it should at least affect the kind of shelter you construct for yourself. Learn your proximity to the following targets and plan approximately. Airfields and naval bases, especially those known to house nuclear bombers, ballistic missile submarines or ICBM silos, these are certain to be attacked, even in a limited nuclear exchange. Commercial ports and runways over 10,000 feet, 3,048 meters long, these are likely to be attacked even if a limited nuclear exchange and certain to be attacked in an all-out nuclear war. Centers of government. These are also likely to be attacked even in a limited nuclear exchange and certain to be attacked in an all-out nuclear war. Large industrial cities and major population centers. These are likely to be attacked in the event of an all-out nuclear war. 19. Keep an eye on the news. A nuclear attack will unlikely come out of the blue for an enemy nation. Such an attack would likely be preceded by a deteriorating political situation. A war with conventional weapons between nations that both have nuclear weapons, if not ended swiftly, may escalate towards nuclear war. And even limited nuclear strikes in one region carry the likelihood to escalate towards an all-out nuclear war elsewhere. Many countries have a rating system to denote the imminence of an attack. In the USA and Canada, for example, it may be useful to know that DEFCON Defense Condition Level 20. Keep your prepping to yourself. Do not go around and tell everyone in your area where you live about your prepping. If you do, then you may find yourself overwhelmed by visitors when everything falls apart. And please do not go on television and brag about your prepping to a national audience. Prepping is something that you want to keep to yourself, unless you want hordes of desperate people banging on your door in the future. Please get prepared while you still can. A great storm is coming, and time is quickly running out. So, do you have any points that you would add to the list above? Please feel free to post a comment with your thoughts below.